So our next call this afternoon is by Dick Hayne, second action on loose periods of iterated neural cycles. Let me turn this on. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I guess like most people who are coming from places where it's colder. <laughs> and I guess this is the first time I've been here in reality. Last year, I guess I was in pretty much was I think two years ago. Um, so I want to talk about Hecker actions on things as close as you can get to Pi 1 without doing it on Pi 1 because there are issues I'll explain with trying to do it to the fundamental group. So before I say much more, let me just say what iterated integrals are. Maybe so this is the way I make a living by studying these things. And I'll just give you the definition just so you know. So just suppose that M is a manifold. And then you've got one forms. You can do this for higher degree forms, but take these. Um, so these are one forms. Uh, and now suppose we have a gamma as a part. It doesn't even have to be a loop. We can just take a, uh, M as a part. So we want it to be smooth enough to integrate. And the integral of a gamma of omega one Omega R is defined to be, it's what I believe physicists call a time ordered integral. Oops. So the definition looks a little crazy when you see it, but it's actually very natural. And so, um, you can think of these as functions on the path space or the loop space. So, um, so what's an iterated Shimura integral? So this is the terminology of Manon is the following. So you take, uh, let's suppose that F1 up to FR, not to be confused with those ones, um, are modular forms. Of SL2C, so of level one. You can take later on, I'll, I won't do it explicitly, but you can do it with higher level characters and so on. And so these are functions on the upper half plane. So FJ takes the upper half plane to C and it satisfies the usual transformation law. And so um, we can set up in each of these, um, let's say the weight of this one is MJ. So the modular forms have a weight. And uh, I'm going to set omega uh, F J for it. So if F has weight M, I'm going to define this to be the differential form, F of tau, that's the parameter in the upper half plane, tau and the J minus one, T tau. And so here zero is less than J is less than the weight of F. So F here is also a modular form that applies to all of these guys here. And an iterated Shimura integral is just an iterated integral of these guys. So uh, an iterated Shimura integral is just gamma goes to the integral over gamma of omega F1, 1, J1, F, F, R, J, R. Don't worry, I'm not going to get too heavy into the notation. And so a very important case is where you take the path to be the path in the upper half plane that goes, people say it goes from I, zero to I infinity. It's just the imaginary axis. And that's going to correspond to the element. It's going to be the loop in the modular curve that corresponds to this guy here. And in this case, if these are not cut forms, 
you have to regularize this integral, then you regularize it in exactly the way that you regularize periods of least toss practice when you take the limit. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. Could you, could you write a little larger? I think it's not seen on the room. And I have a question for so what are these F's? I, I still don't get the Ah, oh, sorry, I forgot to say here where gamma star of omega j is F J T D T. So in this case, for example, and I'll say a little bit more about this. Um, so these integrals, these are periods of um, of um, the mixed time structure on the relative unipotent completion. of S L to Z. So in this case, you would want to take paths that the base point would be some tau zero, you would integrate uh, to gamma of tau zero, and that would be the value on that path. And so um, the, the functions themselves are elements of the coordinate ring of this thing. And I'll define that later. In fact, I'm going to define a larger version of that to be confused. Read my notes here. So, um, so the next thing I want to talk about is Brown's period. So this is Francis Brown's. So I'll just give a very special case, just one example, but um, lambda f, so f is a modular form. This guy here is equal to uh, 2 pi i to the minus s gamma of s, that's the gamma function, times the L function of this. You don't really have to know what these are. I'm writing them down because I'm trying to motivate what I'm doing. Um, so this is the L function, so f f is the sum of a n uh, q to the n. Then this thing is equal to sum a n over n to the s. And so this is the thing that number theory is like. Um, and Francis, so if, well, Francis defines, I'll just do this with two of these guys. J1, J2, it's the iterated integral of length two of two of these guys. So this is going to be, um, but it's the integral of this axis here. So zero to I infinity of omega F1, J1, omega F2, J2. So in short, you're just integrating the modular form in some small power of J, uh, I didn't say here, I, yeah, yes, I did. The J is restrained here. We do this iterated integral of the y axis and we regularize if necessary. So here we want to take uh, F, the FJs to be Eisenstein series. So the normalized Eisen series of weight 2n, I'll define like this, is uh, minus B2n over 4n. So B2M is the Bernoulli number plus the sum sigma 2M minus 1 of N Q to the N and greater than or equal to 1. So this is the normalized Eisenstein series. Wait 2M. So this is a module form. And this is the divisor function here. So it's the sum of the 2m minus first powers of the divisions of n. And so what Brown did was 
do the following computation of twice iterated integrals of Eisenstein series. So he showed that I inverse lambda delta 12. So here delta is the modular form of weight uh, 12. So it's Q times the product of uh, one minus Q to the N to the 24. This is, this is weight 12, and it's a cusp form. So this guy here is equal to um, 600 times lambda G4, G6, sorry, G4, G10, uh, 2, 5, plus 480 uh, lambda G10, G4, Okay, so this is a period relation relating the period of a cusp form of weight 12 to twice iterated integrals of Eisenstein series. And I could say a lot more about this formula, but you, said, you might say, why do you care? So um, I'm not going to state it, but there's some observation that Various people around Ihara made about the action of the absolute Galois group on pi one, p one minus zero on infinity. There are these oddball congruences, and this thing is actually motivic. We have a theory of mixed state motives, and this identity here implies the first Ihara to the cow relation motivically. And not only this, he did it for all pairs of Eisenstein series, similar relations, not just. Not just here in weight 12. And so it gives you all the Ihara to cow relations, right? So, and if you're a Hodge theorist, it's telling you. Um, so, Ihara to cow is one thing. So, basically, um, uh, I'm sorry. We got out of spell the cap. Anyway, um, and the other thing is it says um, there is a copy of an extension. Um, it actually says that Galois theoretically and much theoretically uh, cuspidal of SL2Z, S10 of the standard local system into this extension into. Uh, Q in the coordinate ring, the coordinate ring of, um, sorry, I have to put it to uh, inside the coordinate ring of this relative completion SL2C, which I'll define later on. So, um, what's it? Sorry, what is it? K twist, 10 to with 10 to with Q of 12. So, this, this guy has weight 11. This has weight minus 24, so this has weight minus 13. Mm -hmm. So, so all, the, all the relations are linear. That you get this way. Well, it, essentially, this is a twice iterated integral or a single iterated integral. So, I'll get to ask you a question again in two minutes if I haven't answered it. So, So anyway, all of these extensions that you find here conform to conjectures of Aylinson. So there's conjectures about which extensions you can get of Q by motives of cusp forms, exactly how many should you should get. And maybe I'm gonna, I don't wanna go down this rabbit hole, but basically there's a theory of mixed tape motives and Brown proves that pi one of P one minus zero on an infinity generates that category. Their periods are multi -zetas. So his program is to do the same for the motives of modular forms. So you take the relative completion of SL2C, which I will, I'm going to find a bigger one. And you look at its coordinate ring and 
you could say look inside the category of these torch structures and say it's going to generate some to Nikean category, and that should be the category of what he calls mixed module motives, unramified overseas. And so you want to be able to find all these things that balance and predicts, and not anything more. So, um, so <clears throat> yeah, so balance's conjecture is predictions. Or uh, x one motivic of Q by a whole bunch of like symmetric uh, K one of V of F one tensored with tensored with sin uh, K R of V F R D. Oops, D. So these are the Hot structures corresponding to say modular forms of SL2Z. This is a twist, and you can take symmetric powers. So this guy here is just this is V uh, delta 12. That's somehow why you're seeing this 12 here. Anyway, if you don't understand this, it doesn't matter. It's just motivation. So <clears throat> um, in 2000 and at IAS in 2014-15, Francis, I, and several other people in this room were at the Institute. And so he'd already proved these period relations. Matsumoto and I had already done the applications. And he asked me a question. He said, so all of, all of these guys that we're finding that are absolutely consistent with Bayless's conjecture, all sitting at the bottom of this thing. They're easy to find. And he said, how can I find extensions of hot structures that look like this in sub quotients? You know, where do I go hunting in here for these guys? You know, we want to find them. They should be there. And I think that it's not known very well how these guys occur in nature. And so, and I had a question for him. I said, because yeah. you because my next question is there any geometry, any example with a non trivial power where you know how to geometrically get that? I'm not quite there yet. So I'll get there. You got about a minute. So, yeah, but my question was him was saying these guys here are spitting out the period of a cusp form. And so, is there a hack action on these things that's, you know, where you get eigenvalues that tell you that you find this guy here? So, that's, I started working on it at the Institute. So I started working at trying to get the heck algebra to act on this guy. So if, if none of this makes sense, it's going to become undergraduate mathematics soon. So that's what I want to talk about. But um, so yeah, I, I'm not going to write out the questions. It's how to basically how to cut up this guy into into sub quotients into motivic pieces and. For example, mixed constructions and so on. And um, and can you explain these period computations by a Hecker action? So um, so let me talk about Hecker operators. I should I try to distance myself from anything I do by saying, that, for example, here I'm a topologist. I've never taken a clock in number theory. I just hang around the wrong people. It's an occupational hazard. So, um, okay, um, operators. So this stuff again, it's, it's elementary. Now. So um, I'm going to use the notation y to be equal to what some people have been calling y of one, and which is um, also known as m one one, and it's. Uh, equal to SL2Z. I'm going to take the orbital quotient of the upper half plane, and it's also C2 minus, if I use coordinates UV, it's going to be, what is it? C squared minus 27 new cubed, zero. the discriminant locus uh, modulo GN. Again, 
stack quotient, right? So, and I'm doing everything here on the C. Um, so this is just the modular code, moduli space of elliptic codes. And it's also equal to, and here, it's just the set of lattices in C, modular ISO. This is actually the modular space of lattices. Um, all right, so now, and, if, and I'll say the obvious thing, if you've got a lattice, this gives you an elliptic curve, E, e equal to C log lambda. Right. So, so let me describe what Tn is. So Tn is, so N is an integer greater than or equal to one, though one's not very interesting. So you've got y here, and I'll, I'll call it cub n here and y here. You've got so what is cub n? You could think of it as here's an elliptic curve, here's a covering e prime over n. So points here are elliptic curves, points up here are coverings of isogenies of degree n, if you like. Down here you would have e prime. And so that's the correspondence. And so by the way, did I answer your question? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I probably passed this one. Anyway, so, or in terms of lattices, you have a lattice here. You just have a lattice contains a sub lattice with index n, and down here. So the, here you appoint as a pair of lattices, one of which has index n and the other, and you can project the two different ways. So the correspondence is you pull up here and push down here. And in the sense of all the folds, both of these are. Unramified. So, if you and let me give you an idea that so essentially this is a multi valued map. So, Tn is going to be, I call this uh, pi of pi, Tn would be acting on functions would be something like pi lower star pi of upper star. Right? So you can think of it as a multi-valued map. And so Tp, if P is a prime, would take as a function going this way, it goes, this goes to P tau, meaning the SL2z orbit of that, plus sum zero to P minus one, tau plus J over P. Like that. So it's it's a some kind of multi-valued map. And you can pull modular forms and stuff up here and push them down there, cohomology classes up and down, and so on. And the action is very nice. Um standard properties of these. So so these act on things like modular forms and things like the cohomology of y with coefficients in in um, symmetric powers of the, the standard local system and so on. And they act as morphisms of mixed odd structures, Galois invariant, and so on. So basic properties. When they act on these guys, it's going to be that um, Tn, Tn, these guys commute when the GCD of n and m is equal to one when these are co-prime. And I'll write it. The second one says that Tp to the n is a pol. It's just I'm going to just say it's a, a polynomial in Tp. I won't write it down exactly. <clears throat> um, and the third thing is that um, the, the, the TP, um, the TP generate a, uh, like this is semi simple sub algebra of all sorts of things, but for example, the endomorphisms 
of this H1 SL2C is <clears throat> and this stuff got a long and glorious history. And you have the Hecke algebra, if you like, in some sense, you could take it to be just, just polynomial algebra generated by the TPs such that P is prime. So this, this algebra will act on these cohomology groups, for example, in every path for all in. <clears throat> so the basic question is, um, Act on I one or something non abelian. So I'll, I'll consider these to be abelian invariants or something, or or on this coordinate ring of G, the completion of SL2Z. So when you try to do this, you run into an incredible mess. So this is I spent half my time at the Institute. Um, I wasn't a total waste doing this, but you can imagine here's. Is y is y, and here's this guy up here. So this is um, you have a loop, nice loop here, and this point's going to go over to a whole bunch of points here. There'll be a whole bunch of points up here, and this thing might move to a loop here and something like that, and you know, and it, it'll go down to all sorts of paths and things, you know. So it can end up you have a big problem with base points. You get a mess. So um, you can try to do it by being clever and it doesn't work. Well, I couldn't make it work. So what do you what do you get when you get base points? Well, three homotopic classes of maps of the circle into X is just equal to conjugacy classes. Pi one x. So why not do it with conjugacy classes? Then there's no base point issue. So that's what this is the very elementary thing. It's this is probably undergraduate mathematics, depending on what country you're in. In the US, it's graduate school. So um, I, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how um tech operators have here. Right, and SL, just in case you haven't thought about it for a while. Ah, so notation, first of all, I'm going to abuse notation. So in the paper, I use two different fonts, but lambda of X is going to be just this guy here. Uh, so if X is a space, this will be three homotopic classes of maps of S1 into X. And this works even if X is not connected. And I'll abuse notation and write lambda gamma if this is a group, this is just going to be conjugacy classes. Yeah, right. So the set of, and so this is saying that lambda of pi one of x, provided the space is connected, this is lambda of x. And I apologize for this confusion, but um, convenient. So let's think about lambda of SL2C as, by the way, it's going to be important that we're considering the modular curve here as a normal fold. Uh, I want to work with SL2C, not PSL2C. But anyway, there's three kinds of elements in here. If you, if you look at it, um, the absolute value of trace of gamma equals zero, um, Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think it's zero. This means the gamma is torsion, so it fixes a point. Um, you've got absolute value of maybe this one here as well. It means order four. This should mean uh, this is order four, order, order dividing four, order dividing six. Absolute value of trace of gamma equals two. This is parabolic, so it it's essentially something that looks like one zero one n. When you get to something like that, plus or minus, and then you've got the absolute value of trace of gamma uh, bigger than two, 
These guys here, this is the generic situation. These correspond to closed Q-discs. Not necessarily prime. And I should point out that it's a little wrinkle because minus the identity X trivia. These correspond to horror cycles. These, these are just uh, And there's loads of these guys. So this this thing here, this is big. So um, I'm going to take uh, I think so. Let me say the theorem. The first theorem, and this is actually not that hard, is each hack operator on um, Z lambda. Uh, I'll call it Z lambda Y. So if you like, this is Z lambda SL2 C. It acts on this. It also acts on Z lambda SL2 Z hat. Note that the hat is outside the SL2 Z. So it's, this is not SL2 Z hat, this is SL2 Z hat. Um, and the Galois group actually acts on this guy, the absolute Galois group. And these hack operators all commute with this action. Um, the, we also have the uh, TN and TM commute when N and M are relatively prime. And three, I'll just say it this way here, and I'll explain it better later on. I hope TP, TP to the N is not equal to zero N bigger than one. This is odd because, so in the classical case, TP, you know, TP to the N is polynomial in TP, so they commute. And here they don't. And I will give you an idea why this is true in a little bit. So I have to show you how to define these guys. Yeah. So construction. So um, unramified correspondences. So by this, I mean, I've got some space here, space here, space here, and I have, these, these are, um, these are both unramified coverings. So high, uh, high, high, unramified. And so what I wanna do is just pull things up here and push them down here. In fact, I don't really need this to be unramified. <clears throat> Yet. So now with loops, I know how to push loops forward. So I want to define maybe I'll call this thing F. And so I have to define F star. Sorry, F, F I want to define to be equal to something like uh, pi pi upper star pi upper star, right? You're going to pull something up here and push it down there. And so um, with loops, um, pi prime lower star takes lambda of u to lambda of y. That's easy. Just you got a loop here, just project it down. So I have to define uh, pi upper star. And this is this is remarkably easy and natural. All you do, I'll explain it in two different elementary ways. So, um, so uh, pull back. And so I've got. Suppose I have an unramified cover over X by, and I want to. I've got a loop, so that's a map of S one into here. I can just pull the covering back. And so every covering of the circle, every finite covering, yeah, these are unramified and finite. Um, 
this is just equal to a disjoint union of S1s, and this map here will be just a disjoint union of alpha uh, J tildes, right? So this covering breaks up. And so the definition is that uh, pi upper star of alpha is just the sum of uh, the alpha J tildes, which is in Z uh, lambda. Right, so we know we know how to define pullback. We know how to define push forward. So therefore, we know how to define heck operators because I told you the heck operator was. So you do not put multiplicity starts from multiplicity. Sorry, you do not put multiplicity starts from the degree of the sum. No, 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 you just that's yeah. That's actually it's an interesting thing. So um, let me. I, was, I took this example out, but I'll put it back in again. Yeah. So let's. Let's just do a stupid thing. So there's an important point here is related to the fact that so f goes from uh, z of lambda. So f here takes loops here into linear combination of loops here, z linear combinations. And so <clears throat> yeah, so this is a sum of loops. Uh, I, I was going to give you another way to do it. Another way to do it is you can you can choose a base point on your alpha. So upstairs, there'll be the inverse image of this base point. And the, there'll be this, this loop here will have lots of pre-images. And in fact, you can figure out how big these cycles are by the way this loop acts on the fiber, you know, the cycle time. And so you just do that. You just lift, take all the lifts of this loop starting at each one of the inverse images of this, and see so here, if I lift it up and then push down, I would get this guy. Would, this guy would go to alpha to the fourth. This would go to alpha, and this would go to alpha cubed. So in this case, pi lower star and pi upper star of alpha would be equal to something like alpha plus alpha cubed plus alpha to the fourth. And if you add up these exponents, um, it's eight, and that's the degree of this map. Make sense. So in this case, if, if I just took a circle, what 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 is lambda c lambda of s one? It's just Laurent Paul. It's just this is the abelian group, so it's the same as pi one. So it's z t t inverse, right? So when you pull up and push down, you just get some Laurent polynomial. But it's much more complicated. In fact, it's so complicated for SL2 to be quite down at the standard. I didn't. Um, all right. So um, I will say a little bit about composition. Composition is the usual way you compose correspondences. I will not say much. You B, if, if you have, if this is F. And that's G. You can take up here, you put U cross over Y and V. You've got that. This is also, this is an unramified correspondence. So this whole thing is G to circle F. Right? So you've got correspondence. And um, things work nicely. You've got uh, G circle F is equal to. Star is equal to so acting on lambda so this because of all of this we have this is telling us that tn is that each tn is acting on z lambda s l two z I should say it's also an exercise in covering space theory to give a group theoretic formula. You don't need any topology. It's just a bit of a pain. It's just a little likely. But so you can. All right. So I want to talk about the relations. I haven't written them up yet. And so for this, I need an operator called EP. And it, this might be the time. I might have passed the idea. 
flow um, the operator EP. So EP, so P is prime. So, um, so this is going to play the role of P in the usual formulas. So what we're going to do here is um, what's what's covering P? It's it's the modular code y zero p so this is equal to um, gamma zero p the upper half plane and gamma zero p is um this is just equal to the gamma in s l two c such that gamma is up a triangular log p and so I've got a projection down here, pi, and here's y, our modular curve. I'm going to do so. I have um, pi lower star, pi upper star, which takes uh, z lambda s l two c into itself, and e p is by definition pi lower star pi upper star minus the identity. So if you think about it, this covering here, the fiber of this, the fiber is P1 of FP, which has P plus one point. So this has degree P plus one, so I've subtracted one. So this guy has, if you like, degree P. So this is my generalized P. And, and uh, so um, I'll just so contained inside Y, this contains the Q disk. Right. So this is this is if you like, this is essentially. Um, the upper half plane for this group. Why slightly, but you've got the, the Q disk here where the coordinate is e to the two pi i tau. Now, in this Q disk, I have a loop, and I'm going to call this loop um, sigma zero. So this guy here is really corresponding to this guy or its conjugacy class. And now let me just give you a formula for um, EP of sigma zero uh, to the N is equal to um, P times sigma zero to the N, P divides N, and it's uh, sigma zero to the NP he does not divide, he does not divide in. And TP, and TP, it's really easy to compute these. Uh, I can say why if you like. Probably the best use of my time is equal to um, sigma zero to the NP plus uh, e, e of sigma zero. Okay. So, for example, in this case, this would be uh, that's right. You know, I'm about to post the paper on the archive. I have a copy of it. Correct. So, all right. So, the proposition is that. Is that uh, TP to the N circle TP is equal to TP to the N plus one plus TP to the N minus one circle EP. So if you look in the standard case, and if you, there's always, there's usually an operator RP here. It doesn't play a role here. If we rescale our lattice, it doesn't change anything. But this guy plays the role of P. So there's a P there in the formula. 
And so, for example, so this is easy. When I say easy, I mean it's completely elementary. So, um, so in particular, TP squared is equal to TP minus EP. And it tells you that T, so this implies that TP squared, TP is equal to TP EP. And if you go over here using these formulas, you can easily check that this is not equal to zero. You can use this to show that uh, TP doesn't compute, compute with any power. So, um, I cannot find any relation between TP and EP. They tried. Um, I might be stupid, but there are a lot of loops. So, so any relation you can find has to be satisfied on every loop. And the loop, the consciousness class in SL2C are very rich. So because of this, I define sort of a different heck algebra. I call it T hat. So I like to find T hat P to be yeah, relations between TP, EP, I have no idea. So this motivates to finding the free associative algebra generated by a symbol EP, TP and a symbol EP, and you can define this sort of extended Hecker algebra to be restricted tensor product of these kinds. And so this guy here acts on Axon Z lambda SL two Z. So, and in fact, this action commutes with. If I, I it also computes when I put profile that computation there. So, I'm running out of time, I guess. So, this is not sort of an algebra geometric on a cubic object, where it doesn't appear to me to be one. So, we want we want T hat to act on O of this relative completion or something. So let me define this relative completion very quickly. In the something. So, so relative completion. I'm going to. I might have to call this big relative completion. So let me give you the general story. So what do you do? You have a discrete group gamma. So this is the input. You have, this is a discrete, or you could also put a prime finite group, but I'll skip that, discrete group. And you should think of S, L, to Z. And R, Will be a possibly pro reductive group. And so here you should think of S, and I'll make it over Q, SL2 over Q, or we could take SL2 cross SL2 Z mod N. So at any finite group you can regard as an affine group. Just take the dual of the group rank, so functions on the group, or I can take the inverse limit of all of these, and that's that would be a pro reductive group SL2 C hat. This is just the inverse limit of these guys. And so this is a pro reductive group. And so, and the third thing is you need a homomorphism from gamma into the Q points of R that's a risky dense. And the diagonal homomorphism that, well, here it's clearly Swirsky dense, but it'll be Swirsky dense here because you'll fill up this guy pretty quickly, and the congruent subgroup is Swirsky dense in here. And so you've got this guy. And so what is the relative completion? What did you write in the second? SL2 times SL2 also? This is SL2, and this is SL2 over Q. This is SL2 crossed with SL2 Z mod N. Oh, Z mod N, okay. Yeah, so it's a finite group, so we regard it as a affine group. 
And here, this is the inverse limit of all of these. So it will be SL2 plus SL2Z. So, and so what do we get here? We're going to get a, um, a group here that if all I'm not supposed to say surgex, it should be faithfully flat or something. And then here, you can, this is relative unipotent completion. So this guy here is pro unipotent. And I'm going to be sloppy with rational points. We had our row here, and it now lives up to a row hat in here. And this is universal. It's, it's the best thing you can construct. And so I'm not going to spend time defining it, but I'll say there's several ways. You just take the inverse limit. This guy's a risky dense. If you took the inverse limit of all pictures that look like this, where this is a lift of rho and it's a risky dense, that would give you this group. Or you can use Tanaka theory, which is I've been convinced that that's the best way to do it. So um, I hang around the wrong view. So, <clears throat> and so, um, yeah, and so this completion here, I will call GN. If I complete with respect to this, I'll call this one G. So, this is just the N equals one case. This is G1. This is the guy we usually use but to do heck operators. The functions on this completion get mapped into this guy by TN. You forced to take this bigger completion. Um, I will say something about it. The unit, if the Lie algebra, so we're going to work with this guy. And the, I'll, I'll tell you what the Lie algebra of this is the coordinate ring of this, just the direct limit of these guys. So just um, so the Lie algebra, yeah, U n so U so U is equal to the Lie algebra of U um, U n equals the Lie algebra of U n the unipotent radical of T n and this is just the inverse limit of the U n so I'm going to just tell you what these guys. Uh, they're all free. No relations. They're free as a pronyl potent Lie algebra. The, um, to give you an idea what they're like, it is that um, H1 of UN is equal to the direct sum of a chi. These are characters of SL2Z mod N. H1 of the principal congruent subgroup of level N with coefficients in uh, direct sum over M, SM of H, and then you take the chi isotypical part. So that's where SL2ZN is acting by, uh, by essentially by this re corresponding representation. Then I'm going to take this here. So this is this is a representation of SL2, and this is a representation of SL2. So this guy contains all the modular forms, the modus of all modular forms of level dividing in. So when I take the limit, I'm getting all the modular forms of SL2C of all levels. They're sort of generators. Of this Lie algebra, and it's free, so this, this guy is enormous. And I should say the weight graded portions of this contain all these sort of flood structures of the type that valence is interested in. So I'm going to define, uh, and the coordinate ring of GN, it contains iterated Shimura in a Of level dividing n. There, there's more stuff in here. And so, um, and so I want to define CL of G, 
this is equal to the class functions. So these are the uh, this is just O of G, and you just take the G invariance where this is acting by conjugation. So these are the iterated integrals that are um, this value on a conjugacy class is constant, and this has a canonical mixed hot structure. And so it's independent of the base point. A couple of minutes, I guess. So, and I will say also, um, if I take CL of G and I tensor with QL, so this will be I'm thinking of this thing as a Q vector space. So here I probably should. Um, if I tensor with QL, this has a natural Galois action that's going to be compatible with um, the Galois action on conjugacy classes. So any of these guys can be evaluated. This guy uh, can be this map, guy maps into Z lambda SL2Z um, Q, or in this case, QL. But I should have drawn it up here. Um, this Galois action is dual to the Galois action here. So we're getting, on the Galois side, we're getting lots of extensions of the kind that are interesting. And you have a canonical mixed hot structure. So we're getting lots of extensions of mixed hot structures. So the theorem, and I'll stop after this, the theorem is that um, I had X on the class functions on this big relative completion of SL2Z, um, each TN, maybe I'll put dual because it's the dual action, um, is a morphism. Mixed hot structures. Um, each TN is GQ equivariant. And we have the relation, I won't write it down before, we have the relation we dual to the one I wrote down before between TP and TPN. And uh, what else? Yeah. So, and then this remark is we have our Adams operations. So um, you can just take it from lambda at, of anything, lambda gamma into lambda gamma. It just takes the conjugacy class of alpha, I'll call it CK. It takes something to its K power. And so the, um, I don't know, I could never figure out how these guys are related to these guys, but um, I will just put in a working hypothesis. It is that um, the Mumford Tate group of G with the appropriate base point is equal to the Mumford Tate group of CL. So maybe I should put both. So the thing this thing tells you how rich the mixed part structure is the class group of G, and this should be the commutant of. T hat and atoms. So all of the atoms operations, there's a inducer map here. They're all morphisms of mixed hot structures. They're all Galois equivariant. So you would, they will constrain the Mumford Tate group, the Hecker operator as well. So optimistically, why not? I probably want to live long enough to be contradicted. Thank you.